Mike Rowe has made his name being a dirty, dirty man. Rowe was the ever-agreeable host of Discovery Channel's Dirty Jobs. For eight glorious seasons of him roughing it with the bravest of blue-collar workers and followed that up with his equally daring CNN series, Somebody's Gotta Do It. But there's a lot more to him than TV fame. So do yourself a favor and dig into some less-known facts about Mike Rowe's life. Digging in, after all, is pretty much what got Rowe famous in the first place. Operatic Roots In order to break into TV, Roe needed to have a Screen Actors Guild membership card. But living in Maryland, you couldn't obtain one without doing union work, which was impossible to get without, that's right, those dreaded cards. Luckily though, there was a loophole for this Catch-22. Roe figured out that by earning a membership to a union like the American Guild of Musical Artists, he could just buy his way into its sister union. Problem solved. So even though he wasn't musically inclined, Roe chose the opera union as his Mark, picking the shortest performance piece he could find, the Kotaria from Puccini's La Boheme, for his audition. That went about as well as you might expect from a guy who just started opera a month before. After performing his piece, Rose reviewer asked, You have no idea what you're doing, do you? Le me grazia, Wake up, you producer! Va bene, yes! Even so, Roe was told he had a rich, well-modulated baritone, and that the next natural step was to dress him up as a pirate and let him in. Pirate Roe enjoyed opera so much, he stuck around for seven years, all after originally just wanting an easy way to get his SAG card. I got in, and then I realized I liked the music, and then the girls. He even used his pipes to pump up his old QVC infomercials. The end is near, so I face. The final curtain. Hey, at least he has an artistic outlet for those days when the job gets a little too filthy, yeah? 180 minutes, 9 years, 169 episodes, and 50 states later, it's crazy to think that Dirty Jobs, the franchise that truly put Roe on the map, was originally only slated to air as three one-hour specials. That's right, 180 minutes of Roe was all we were supposed to get. After he caught the Discovery Channel's attention by sending a tape of one of his more graphic pieces from a segment he used to do on San Francisco's Evening Magazine. The segment was called Somebody's Gotta Do It, and it featured Roe exploring the wonders of artificial cow insemination. Unsurprisingly, viewers reacted to the specials en masse, and in every way imaginable, giving Roe the bright idea to see if Discovery was interested in making his fresh but clearly eccentric concept a regular deal. They were interested, all right, and like that, Dirty Jobs was born. Eagle Scout Allegiance After earning the esteemed honor of Eagle Scout as a child, Roe remembers receiving a letter from none other than President Gerald Ford, congratulating him on his accomplishment. The letter was written on fancy paper and featured the presidential stamp, with Ford's name and his photocopied signature at the bottom. In other words, it was a form letter, which was nice to Roe in theory, but at the same time, felt slightly deceitful. So what did Roe do when he came up and became the host of his own show? Why, he created his own form letter for new Eagle Scouts, of course, and offers to send it signed and personalized to any Eagle Scout who requests one, so long as they provide him with a self-addressed, stamped envelope. Small Digs Considering Rose's fame from Dirty Jobs and several other successful projects, it should come as no surprise he's not doing too bad financially these days, with his worth estimated at a fat $35 million. That's surely enough to splurge on a mansion, or two or three. But for Roe, there's been no chunk of change big enough to get him away from the modest San Francisco apartment he's called home for the last 14 years and counting. Roe finally revealed his digs when a fan on Facebook asked him, among other things, to truthfully admit he doesn't live in a mansion. It was a pretty easy thing to admit for Roe, who said the extent of his mansioning experience is that he house sat once and kinda liked it. Otherwise, he's been more than content sticking with the apartment lifestyle, especially at a pad that offers such a sweet and and only slightly obstructed view of Treasure Island and Alcatraz, which he regards as the best part about his place. Talk about a killer view. Death Threats Whether intended or not, Roe's lengthy run on dirty jobs makes him somewhat of a spokesman for overworked and underpaid Americans everywhere. So when it was his voice that played over a 2014 ad for Walmart, you know, the same supersized retailer frequently accused of overworking and underpaying its employees, Trumpeting the company's pledge to invest $250 million in US manufacturing, it's no wonder people were peeved. Some were even mad enough that Roe received death threats. Ultimately, Roe took the threats with a grain of salt and addressed the criticism with a lengthy Facebook post in which he wrote that the company's commitment to investing in America was worth shilling for. 
I'm not a spokesman for Walmart. I'm a spokesman for American manufacturing. Birthday suit surprise. The only thing worse than receiving death threats is waking up one morning to find people on the internet thinking you're dead already. Rose had the fortune of experiencing both scenarios at the same time. According to the rumors, he got into a fight with a flying drone, and shotgun in hand, died in the process. But that wasn't the real story, or even half of it. After headlines declared him deceased, Roe emerged very much alive, to tell the true story of how he almost had a duel with a peeping drone. As he explained it, he was decked out in his birthday suit and dreaming when he heard a loud buzzing noise and rose to investigate the culprit. It turned out to be a nosy little drone, right outside his window, with its camera pointed directly at Roe and his exposed body. Roe grabbed his shotgun from under his bed and, still entirely nude, stormed outside, ready to shoot the electric peeping Tom from the sky. He pumped a shell into the chamber, which was apparently her and served as a genesis of the death hoax, had the shot lined up and was about to pull the trigger when the drone's camera turned towards him and made Roe rethink his actions. But what I didn't know is, is the drone operator, some worthless little pervert within a mile of me looking at a monitor, is he recording it there as well? He could only imagine a video popping up on his mom's computer with the headline, Dirty Jobs Guy Totally Loses It, Gets Naked and Shoots Drone from San Francisco Skies. And that fright was enough to make Roe drop his shotgun and reach for his cell phone instead. The only shot he ended up taking was a picture of the drone as it flew away. Dirty Jokes In 2010, Roe made a guest appearance on Sesame Street for a segment aptly titled Dirtiest Jobs with Mike Rowe. Unsurprisingly, his appearance included coming into contact with Oscar the Grouch and the two made for awesome, filthy television that included an adult joke that was probably a little too risque for the young audiences that watched. So just come around to the back door. The back door? Yeah. You? No. Always wanted to go in the back. Um, yeah. So that somehow made it past PBS censors and gave all those parents forced to watch alongside the kids something to chuckle about. In hindsight for Roe, he wrote that the joke was a cheap and childish double entendre and that he had a hangover to thank for his wild hair that day. But hey, at least he picked the right character to go there with. You're a bad banana with a greasy black pea. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.